Hi, I'm Kiana, and this is R&B.com. We are here today with the Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and producer from Tacoma, Washington, <laughs> Will Jordan. <laughs> What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to have you on the show. Very excited. Can't wait to hear some of the things you have going on and um, for pe a chance for people to get to know you. Mm -hmm. So most people know you for writing a hook for Fly, for Nikki, for the song Fly with Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. Right. You're so much more than that. But just <laughs> tell us how you felt when you got the call that you, that they wanted to use your hook for the song. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I, um, I, I was, uh, it was 2010, I think. I was working in a recording studio. I was broke. Um, I was trying to just figure stuff out. I was making like 50 bucks a week on like a good week. And um, I get a phone call from my girlfriend at the time. And she's like, hey, we need to talk. And I'm like, what's up? How's it going? That's not usually a good thing. If <laughs> when well, you get that, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's like, uh, well, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, oh, yeah, good, <laughs> great. That's good news. Um, and I'm freaking out. And so like, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to like, I guess I can put my music on hold and I'll go back to my old job at the warehouse and we'll just figure this out because there's no way I can like be trying to make music in Tacoma um, when I have a family now. Like I was raised to like, you, if you have a family, you've got to provide and take care of business. Um, and she said, well, okay, well, I mean, let's, what if we give it like three months with the music stuff and see what happens? And I'm like, okay, so I don't have any plans or any prospects or anything that was coming soon, but I just willing to give it a shot. So about th within about three months, we got a phone call from a guy named Jack Katz. And he was like, hey, don't tell anyone because we're not sure yet, but we think one of the records that you wrote ended up on Nicki Minaj's album and that Rihanna is going to be singing the part that the part that you wrote. And I'm just like, what? Like, Rihanna heard my voice and like wow. sang, sang what I was singing. And like, these people like aren't even, they're only in the TV. Like, how can they know? Like, I'm not in their world. How? So it was just like mind blowing to know that like those two different dimensions could interact and something like that could happen. So it was, it was a life changing moment. And then by the time my daughter was born, I was able to like, we got an apartment and we're able to afford diapers and groceries and take care of stuff. So it was a dream. It was really a dream come true in a lot of different ways. Good for you. I love that story. I always <laughs> love a story like that. And you're like right at the end and she's like, um, we need to talk. Yeah. So you made it happen. You made it happen. Good for you. So you went from that experience mm -hmm. to now you have your own P EP, Be Good. Yes. Um, and it was written entirely by you. Yes. I'll tell yes. you what, my favorite uh, song is Deep. Oh, and wow. I also like uh, Back to Me. Wow. As well. So, okay. yes, yes, yes. I love it. So, talk about the EP um, and what it means to you. Yeah. So, the, the way I'd like to look at this EP or ex describe it to people is that um, during this time, this last year, it's been, a, it's been a big year and a tough year for a lot of people. And one of the things I noticed with myself and people around me was that a lot of us were eating a lot of comfort food um, and a lot of like home cooking and going to great, yeah, let's go to grandma's house and eating a lot of soul food and a lot of Thanksgiving dinners, even though it was not Thanksgiving. And, um, but it was, re it was very soothing. Um, and that was what I wanted to make musically. I wanted to make something that like was very rich and had a lot of just a lot of feel good stuff in it. Um, there's a lot of music out nowadays that's really cool and trendy and has all the ear candy and all the cool kinds of sounds and drums and um, stuff like that. But I, I just wanted to kind of balance things out and give people something they can listen to to just kind of comfort them a little bit. So that was that was my goal with that. I would love to transition from food to music. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been eating a lot. No, but your, your music is comforting and I did enjoy, enjoy the uh, EP. Thank so you. what would you say is the hardest part of transitioning from that songwriter to the singer? Mm, I mean, it was, I think the a hard thing for me was transitioning from the singer to the songwriter. Because the singer, you kind of have more of an ego and you, when you come into the room, it's about you and what you want to do. As a songwriter, as a new songwriter, like I was when I started, I didn't, I had a hit record and I had a 
platinum black and a Grammy nomination, but I hadn't, that was only one song. So I didn't really matter any different. And so we'd go in there and nobody wanted to hear about my story. Nobody wanted to hear my beats. Nobody wanted to hear my music. They wanted to hear hit records. If I didn't have hit records, they didn't want me in the world. So for me, I had to learn how to like be in a place and not be the center of attention um, and still be confident in myself and still know that my music and what I, my dreams still mattered, even though in this room of these powerful, powerful, influential people, that's not really relevant at the moment. Um, and it helped me to gain and build a belief in myself that couldn't be deterred by like outside influence or outside ideas or perspectives or points of view. Um, and then about a year after I got signed, when they approached me as an artist, I had to get that confidence back and, and like look at myself again as an artist. Um, and I think from that point on, I just merged the two together and I was, I kind of just thought out, I feel like they're just as important. I think every artist should know something about songwriting and every songwriter should be work, working on their own music and writing their own records for themselves. Wow, that's deep. You said start believing in yourself again, because in this yeah. industry, there's a lot of no's. What advice would you have for a singer songwriter who is on the verge of giving up, but they're, you know, teetering the line. What advice do you have for them? Um, I would say, ask yourself, can you keep going? And if you can keep going, keep going. And if you can't keep going, give yourself permission to take a break. Um, I think like a lot of the, like, when you think about friends, when I think about a couple that I, I know, I know of couples that like have on, off and on and off and on and off and on relationships. And I know that those couples will always be together in some regard, in some way. Like that's always going to be her man. He's always going to be her or she's always going to be his girl, even though they break up and get back together again. And I think that we have those same relationships with our dreams and with our goals. It's like this today. I know for sure this is who I'm supposed to be. And then tomorrow I'm not sure. Um, but I think giving yourself permission to take a break from it and re rest and recover and recharge because it's a hard industry to work in. Um, I think giving yourself time and giving yourself grace is really important. Um, and it will help you to see if this is really what you want to do. If you take some time away from it and you miss it, then come back to it. If you don't, then take a break. And if it's a one year break, two year break, five year break, whatever you need to do that, do that. And, and if it's meant to be, it'll be. Okay, so when you first started songwriting, did you ever take a break? Did you need to take a break or have to take a break for any reason um, and then come back? Um, I, <laughs> I took, I took, Technically, no, because I was contractually obligated to write a certain amount of records a week because they had paid me for it. Okay. So I wasn't allowed to take breaks. Um, and that's why I think it's important for people to be able to do that, because I saw the effects of what it has when you don't. Um, I, I stopped looking at I'm one of the things that um, someone that I work closely with in music is a guy named Tommy Ruddle. He's an A&R. He was telling me, he was like, I think that one of the things that happened when we work together is that you and I spent so much time together learning about and critiquing and fine tuning music that I turned you into an A&R. And you lost the artistry, you lost the passion for the music and it became about trying to make hit records. Um, so I had to like, I had to fight and get away from everything in order to find that love and that genuine passion for music and get that back again. Because one of the good things was I learned how to make a hit record and what it sounds like and what different kinds of music could do and where they belong but I had to like learn how to make things I actually like and make music I actually cared about. Um, and I think when I learned to merge those two worlds together, that's how I ended up doing things like what we just we just released. Okay, all right. So what was the craziest thing you've ever seen in a studio? <laughs> <laughs> Share one of your crazy stories, if you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think, Oh my goodness. I'm trying to think of things I can say that won't ruin oh, people's fears. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one of the craziest things I've seen in the studio, I can give you one of the funniest stories I remember in the studio. Um, when I was, I was really, I was like 19 and I was still finding my voice and trying to sing and finding like what my range was. And I was in the studio, it was probably one or two in the morning and I thought I was alone. And I was in there singing the song called Mutual. And it's a really, really high part in the end of the song. And I'm singing it, I'm singing my heart out and I'm failing miserably, it sounds really bad. But I knew that if I was gonna get good, I had to be able to like work through that. And as I'm singing this high note, I have my eyes closed and I hear like a knock on the studio, like the window. 
And I opened up my eyes and it's this lady that worked next door. And she's just like, no, stop, just stop. And then she walks out no. and I was like, wow. <laughs> and then, but sure enough, I, I'm hard headed, I'm a tourist. So I went right back to turn my phone to you. I went right back to singing the song and <laughs> finished the record. Good for but, you. Um, yeah, that, was, that used to happen a lot where people were like, his voice is just like, I don't know. I don't know if he has it. Like he can write and he can make wow. beats. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't see that. You want to sing something for us now? Um, sure, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love singing on the spot. Um, uh, do you have any, like, any particular songs that you want to hear or just? I just want to hear something that is special to you. What's your go-to song that you sing when people say, oh, he sings? Let me hear. What, what, you know, what can he sing? I've been reminiscing. I've been thinking hard. You got front row tickets to watch me fall apart. So maybe I should give this up. Maybe I should run. Cause I didn't give you all this love. You won't give me none. Oh no, oh baby, oh babe. Why you wanna act brand new, babe? I can play that game too, babe. What's the point of me without you, baby? Oh, baby, nah, babe. I can see where this is gonna go, babe. You say that you wanna take it slow. If you're looking for me, I'll be right here in my feelings. In my feelings. In my feelings. If you're looking for me, I'll be right here in my feelings. Baby, I'll be, oh, I'll be, baby, I'll be right here in my feelings. Yeah, that's <laughs> I believe you. You were like in your feelings. That was so good. That was so good. Thank you so much. Wow. I like it. Shame on that lady for saying you're no good. But you know what? That shows what hard work, dedication, and practice will do. Thank you so you much. sound really good. So where do you see yourself in the next three years? What's next for you? Um, just building, building. Um, my dream would be to, there's like, I think there's three things I really would like to do. I'd like to do a lot more on the production side and work with like some of my favorite artists. Um, and just get in the studio, get to like, see what it's like to work with some of the people I grew up listening to and watching. I love how Pharrell was where he would work, not, he, not only would he work with like the biggest, hottest artists at the time, but he'd also bring back people that we heard of and people that we knew and find ways to make records that like bridge that gap um, and that gave them the sound that was relevant in that day and that time. So I would love to work with different artists and different people that maybe I knew like back in the day that maybe haven't put out records in a while. Just find like ways to just to refresh that voice or to um, kind of like add my own little flavor to what they do. Um, I want to do a lot more artist development and working with artists from my area and from my region and like um, build like a pipeline that makes it so people have like a path or a guide they can follow um, because it's it's I don't think it should be as hard as it was for me to to get to where I'm at um, so I want to find ways to make it easier for the people that are coming after me I feel like for creative people especially black people like the struggle our struggle should evolve it shouldn't be me trying to make sure that the people that come after me have to go through the same things i did because i'm bitter and mad about what my experience was i like right. for them to have new struggles and new problems like instead of trying to figure out how to get ten thousand dollars to put behind a project what are we going to do how can we make the most of this million dollar budget or this multi-million dollar budget or how can we take this to film and tv and how can we make the virtual reality music videos um and then beyond that, just doing shows like shows, concerts, touring. Um, I've, I've I played an arena when I was back at like 2014. And um, I remember feeling so at home on that stage. And then we played like another like amphitheater and there's 20,000 people. And I remember feeling so comfortable there. But I, I was opening for another bigger artist. So my dream was like, OK, I got to come back here and I want it to be my show. So those are things that like just big shows and like using that platform to help people and to, and to amplify some of the voices that I know and some of the people that um, that I follow and people that I admire. So I like that. I really like that. You wanna give back and help to uh, other artists. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, so where can people find you? Uh, I'm spending the most, I'm 
so upset. I looked at my phone. I think every Sunday your phone gives you like your uh, your screen, your amount of screen time you've used. And my average amount of time I spent each day on Instagram was like embarrassing. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time on Instagram. Um, if you leave a comment or write me or send a message, I usually get back to you pretty quickly. Um, I'm also on Twitter. My handles are Will Jordan Music. Um, so, but but the best ways to find me is at Instagram, uh, Twitter, and my website is WillJordanMusic.com. Um, any of the platforms, just Will Jordan Music. I'm I'm there probably watching comedy videos or listening to music or trying to find new artists. That's dope, that's dope. Anything else you want your your uh, people to know about you or any causes that are near and dear to your heart that you wanna put out there right now? Um, if anybody's watching this that like is has dreams or has goals or is ambitious um, and they're questioning themselves or not really sure about whether it's meant to be or not. Like if you, I hope they look at me as an example of somebody that did not fit the description or was not somebody that people expected to be who I became. Um, and that if I can if I can do this and get to where I am and where I'm going, because I plan to go way far beyond this, um, then they can do anything they want to do. Ooh, claim it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Will Jordan, for stopping by, hanging out with me for a second. Absolutely. We, we appreciate you and we cannot wait to see what's next for you. I know it's going to be mm. something big. Thank you. I appreciate your time. And thank you guys for tuning in to this is rmb.com. See you next time. All right.